Hello, everybody. This is Tony Turner, and welcome to the Market Now as of Friday, July 23rd at about 1.30 p.m. Eastern. Well, U.S. business activity grew at a moderate pace for a second straight month in July amid supply constraints, suggesting a cooling in economic activity after what was expected to have been a robust second quarter. Even with the boost from government money fading, the economy remains supported by strong demand, with households having accumulated at at least $2.5 trillion in excess savings during the pandemic. And on that somewhat cheerful note, let's move on and look at three charts that could give us some insight into the week to come. First of all, today, as we always do, we're going to look at a daily chart of the S&P 500 spider, symbol SPY, This is the exchange-traded fund that follows our S&P 500 benchmark index. And you may say, Tony, why do we care where the SPY goes or the S&P 500 index? We care, as I've told you all before, we care because it can act as kind of a crystal ball for our stocks, our positions. Uh, In a bull market, three out of five stocks will follow the S&P 500 if it moves higher Four out of five stocks will follow it if it moves lower. So that's why we like to keep an eye on the S&P 500 uh, to see what the broad market is doing and whether it's feeling rambunctious or if if it's pulling back or even if it's moving in a horizontal kind of a range. So let's move on and look at this now today. Speaking of rambunctious, (laughs) the SPY is at this moment in time when I captured this chart trading at $439.92. That's about $43.99 on the S&P 500 itself. So right now it's trading at at least at a new intraday all-time high. Uh, It is trading above its all-time closing high from July 12th. And that was back here at $437.08, or about $43.70 on the S&P 500 itself. So closing highs are important because that's where the commitment comes in, especially on a Friday when uh, traders, investors decide to hold over the weekend. That is a commitment, and that's why we care about the closing price, and we care even more about it uh, when it's on a Friday because that's the end of the week, obviously. So this is all good that we're trading right now, at least uh, at this new all-time high. Now, we can look back here and see Monday of this week, the past week, uh, the SPY right here was sitting on its 50-day moving average. And uh, as you can see, the week before, it, it, it slid south. So now look left with me on the chart and note just back into, uh, well, this this hard left edge here is December 2020. You can see how many times here, January, February, it closed one day below the 50-day moving average right here, but then bounced again. Uh, Right here, it held the 50-day moving average. That's the green line on your screen, by the way. Right here again, May. The S&P 500 spider held the 50-day moving average. So you can see what an important major trend line, this 50-day moving average, the green line you see, is acting as. We had one small close in June below the 50-day line, but it didn't keep going south. This 50-day line, 50-day moving average, has become very, very important. We knew it was, but this is very clear Uh, to see how the 50-day moving average is a very uh, powerful, at least right now, support line for the S&P 500. Right now, today, the uh, 50-day moving average is at $424.71. So if you can see that on the screen here, you may want to take note of that. Now, we did talk, I know I've been on vacation for the last couple of weeks, we did talk about the RSI looking like it was getting in the overbought zone. It didn't quite get there. This is the 14-day RSI. Uh, But again, the SPY pulled back a little bit, again, down to the 50-day moving average now at 439.92. So now we're going to say that we have new resistance at 440, at least for now, temporary, but that's where it is. 
Uh, we can also see support coming in here. Uh, again, we might have small support at the red line, the 20-day moving average coming in at $432.43. Again, that number we want to keep in mind here, the 50-day moving average at $424.71. That's really, really important. Uh, and then, and then, of course, we can look down to these lows down here at about 415 potential support, 405 potential support, and on down. But right now, looking good, nothing we can complain about. Uh, of course, we never can, we can never see into the future. So uh, in the coming week, let's see if the SPY can maintain its energy and continue to fly, continue to make new highs, or... Always remember, it's possible that it could come into some profit taking. So just keep neutral emotions. Please trade what you see, not what you think will happen. Our next chart today is the Invesco QQQ, symbol QQQ. Of course, this represents the NASDAQ 100, which is a main index in our stock market. We, of course, have top holdings in the QQQ of Apple, Amazon, Alphabet, Facebook, uh, Intel's in there, Microsoft's in there, Netflix. Now, so it's all the big momentum stocks. And if you just, if you remember this, the chart we just looked at and how kind of calm it was and how it just walked up the 50-day moving average uh, so nicely, now we're looking at the momentum stocks, which can deliver more profits, but they can also deliver uh, more anguish when, when they move south. So you can see uh, the QQQ back in February and March moved down pretty darn dramatically. So it can deliver, but that's both to the upside and the downside. It's been a fantastic deliverer this year, though. And we can see how the Qs have moved higher right now as I captured this chart. The QQQ is trading at a new all-time high, intraday high at $368.28. Now, back here on July 15th, it made a new all-time closing high at $363.07. So we're above that right now at $368 and change. So we know that um, the Qs have been moving up since May, since this dip down. Well, we can say it dipped down here, the 50-day move below the 50-day moving average. Actually, for, for quite a few days, enough to make you... Uh, enough to make you make sure your stops are in, bounced back over the 50-day moving average, then pretty much walked up the 20-day moving average, backed off week before this. Uh, and and, and it, if you remember, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was talking about how the 14-day RSI was overbought, talking about how the signal line was above the 70, this horizontal line here is a 70 or overbought line for the RSI. All you have to know is when the signal line gets above uh, this line right here, kind of hard to see, I know, that means that whatever you're looking at that you've plotted the 14-day RSI on, it's overbought, uh, meaning it's, it's what I used to call in my books too much chocolate. One or two chocolates is a good thing. Eating the whole box can make you sick. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me, along those lines, this is a kind of a too good to be true line if the RSI moves up over the 70. And so you can see after it did that a couple of times, we had a dip, but then it was a very short dip this time, which is a good thing. Uh, moved down again to the 20 line and back up, as I said, to 368.26. So that was a fast dip on profit taking, but Fortunately, it didn't last too long. So now we're going to say our new resistance line, potential resistance on the Qs, is it 360, uh, 368. Then we can look down here and say nearby support is at, we're going to call it 359 here and round it off at the 20-day moving average. More potential support at $344.92 on the 50-day moving average. Then we have more at, what, about three, uh, down here at about 320, just about close enough where the 200-day moving average is coming in. That's important, but I don't think we'll have to worry about that anytime soon. So tech stocks looking good here, make your momentum stocks making new all-time highs. 
Um, just have to make sure that sometimes the summer volume falls into doldrums. We want to make sure we keep that volume going. Uh, all right, so let's take a look at our final chart here. Today we're going to look at, and you're going to say, oh, Tony, consumer staples are so boring. Yeah, maybe, but sometimes making money isn't boring. Uh, I was looking at the components today of the consumer staples select sector spider ETF, the XLP, and so many, so many ETFs uh, are so far overbought right now. I was really looking for something that still, as we say, has room left in it. Uh, the consumer sectors, uh, the consumer staples, excuse me, consumer staples select sector spider ETF, the XLP, has 32 holdings. But now these are not, this is not your, your father or your mother's um, consumer staples uh, ETF. This is not boring. Uh, top holdings in the consumer staples right now are Procter & Gamble, uh, Coca-Cola, PepsiCo, Walmart, Hey, Costco, Costco's flying, Estee Lauder, it's flying. Uh, we've got Philip Morris, uh, Walgreens, Kraft Heinz, all of these uh, companies are included in the XLP. Now, price today when I captured this chart is at $71.44. Uh, now, it is close to the all-time high back here uh, on June 4th of $71.52. So as you can see that, we're only a few cents away from that all-time all high. Now, if we want to look left at the chart and look at a little history here, we can look left back to January right here of 2021 when the XLP opened right up here. It was trading about in the $66, $67 level. Uh, then it moved back, it moved up a little bit, then moved back to these March lows right here. Made a little tiny double bottom here, a little tiny one, but that's always good when price uh, holds at the low that it makes. And in this case, it made the low right down here in, in March, in February, March, down here at about $63 was the low. Bounced up for a few days, then came down, retested that low, but didn't go lower. So buyers said, okay, we're willing to buy here. We're willing to buy at this price. Then the XLP shot up back over its red line, the 20-day moving average, green line, the 50-day, and, and really made a wonderful, uh, very quick and very sturdy uh, rebound here. Moved up, stayed over the 20-day, then kind of waffled around here. Didn't know what it was going to do. Moved sideways, fell back down. Uh, back down to, but now we can draw a trend line here. See that? Uh, you always want to take it from the first low above the, uh, the, 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 the low that it made. We're going to start up here. We can stretch this trend line from here to here. So now, extending that trend line, we see the XLP pulled back again in June, but now it's starting higher. And, and, and yes, I know it's not as exciting as a lot of the tech stocks, but in the summertime, I like to be a little bit defensive because one never knows what's going to happen. And uh, I like to keep a little bit of my portfolio in stocks that deliver dividends or that are that are consumer staples, because in this in this ETF, of course, there's food and drugs, something that we always need and, and a lot more. So just keeping an eye on the XLP here again, it's now today trading above the 50 day moving average. Uh, the 20-day moving average looks poised and ready to cross above the 50-day moving average. We'll have to see if it does that. Uh, if in the coming week, and the 50-day moving average right now is at $70.41. Okay, that's where the 50-day moving average is right now. Again, price is trading at $71.44. So... It's, it's about a dollar, about a point difference here above the 50-day moving average. It's a pretty good setup here. Um, of course, one never knows what's going to happen. In the coming week, if the XLP stays above the 50-day moving average at 7041, and if the market stays positive, if, if, if the market stays positive, I will add a small position of the XLP uh, to my trading portfolio. My initial stop is going to be down here, a pretty tight one. My initial stop is going to be at 69.50. Now, 
if the XLP rises above the high here, which was what, 71.52, if it rises above that to 72, then I will add uh, extra shares to my portfolio. And of course, by then I will have a trailing stop in. So if the market remains strong next week, you may want to keep an eye on the XLP. And now before we go on to final thoughts, please know that if you'd like to become a more successful trader, this is a great time. Summertime is a good time to check out my trader training programs. I believe you're going to enjoy my straightforward strategies devoted to swing trading, trend trading, bottom fishing, and many, many more. My programs are easy to understand. I make them that way on purpose, and they can help you increase your gains quickly and easily. To see all of my online training programs, you can go to the link on this screen right here or simply click on the orange button below. And now on for our final thoughts. This week's question of the week is, does my trading life look like an uptrend on a chart? Or if my trading life were plotted on a chart, would it be, would it look like an uptrend? Mm -hmm. And that's your, this is your trading life. Let's talk about this. As you progress in your trading, you should feel as though you are making a series of higher lows and higher highs, just like a price uptrend. It's not going to go in a straight line up. I mean, it'd be nice, but it's not going to happen. We all make mistakes. Uh, we all do things that we all get guided by emotions one way or the other. But still in all, on a on a on a day to day week to week basis, you've got to strive for your trading life to look like a price uptrend, higher highs and higher lows. Now your trading account balance may or may not reflect the same pattern, but that's not the concept here. Today we're talking about your trading life as your approach, your attitude, your actions. So let me ask you this, if you think about it. Are you learning? Are you learning new things about trading in the stock market every single week? Are you growing? Are you expanding your knowledge? Are you looking at different ways of looking at stocks and studying charts? Are you planning your each trade carefully? If, if you just jump in yelling, wahoo, it's going to be you know, not a good idea. Are you, are you planning each trade carefully? Are you then following your plan? We can all plan a trade by and large, but following the plan, that's, that's when the rubber meets the road. So if you're doing all those things, I can tell you right now, your trading life is moving in an uptrend. And at times, if you get a little careless with your trades, you might experience a pullback. If you ignore your stops, the pullback in your uptrend may deepen to a correction could deepen ego. Oh gosh, I'm doing everything wrong this week. What we do here, recognize your behavior and your actions without recrimination. Don't, don't say, oh boy, I'm a dope. Don't do that. Just recognize what's going on and put on the brakes. You might even want to sell some positions, certainly put in hard stops with your broker. Then move to, move to the sidelines mentally, identify your errors and write down the lesson points. I'm telling you people, writing it down actually makes a big difference. Today I did this, I learned this, my lesson is this, and I'm not gonna do it again. I'm gonna do it better. So identify your errors and write down the lesson points. Then look ahead, not back, and reestablish your uptrend behavior and actions, which of course go back to learning, growing, planning each trade and following your plan. Okay, something good to think about here. If my life were, my trading life were plotted on a chart, would it look like an uptrend? Finally, please know that if you'd like to become a consistently winning trader, this is a great time to check out my trader training programs. To see all of my online trading programs, simply go to the link on the screen again, or again, simply click on the orange button below. Until next week, hope you're having a great summer. Keep green on your screen. I'm Tony Turner, and this is The Market Now.